Hey guys, today we're going to download and install Python IDLE. We're going to create a simple Python script and display data in the Python shell. Then we'll be requesting input from the user and learning about converting and formatting data in the Python shell. So the first thing I'm gonna do is open up a browser and go to www.python.org. This is where you can go to download the latest version of Python. If you go to downloads, the latest version for Windows is Python 3.10.4. And all you need to do to install this is to just click on your download and click on install now. The user account control pop-up appears, just click yes. And when this setup is done, there will not be any shortcuts on your desktop, but we will be locating the application so we can put an icon on the desktop. Okay, so setup was successful. I'm gonna click close. I'll close out of my browser. And in order to find Python, I'll just search for it. The latest version of Python IDLE is 3.10, so I'm going to right-click on this and click on Open File Location. There's the application, and what I'm going to do now is right-click on it and send a copy over to the desktop. That way I can find it a lot quicker next time I need to run it. So when I double-click on Python IDLE, the Python shell first opens. Here's the shell. And what you can do in order to create a script is click on File, New File, and here's your script window. All you need to do is move it over to the right. All of your code will appear on your right-hand side. All of the output will appear on the left-hand side. So for example, in order to create a script and run it, I first have to save it and give it a name. I'm gonna click File, Save. And we'll just call this test one, click save. And anytime I wanna run my code, I just have to click on run, run module, or you could type in F5 on your keyboard. Saving a file and running it is pretty easy, but anytime that you're going to make changes to your file, you do have to save it before running it. So for example, I can type in a variable like A, and I can equal it to a certain value like six. Then I can type in, this is just an example, B equals seven and C equals A plus B. Now in order to show the output of the variable C, I would have to type in print and in parentheses, the variable C. So when I go here and run it, I first have to click file and save, then run, run module and it's, the output shows us number 13. So that's how you would create a simple Python script. And displaying data in the Python shell is very similar to this and very easy. Let's say, for example, I want to display someone's name, such as Mr. Salazar. I could use a variable such as instructor equals, and in double quotes, type in the name of the instructor, Mr. Salazar. Then in order to use that variable and print it to the screen, I would type in print in parentheses instructor. Now if I file and save and run this, the output shows me the number 13. Also right underneath it, it shows me Mr. Salazar. There's two print statements that I used in my code, and those two are being shown on the screen right here. Formatting data is also similar to this. When you're formatting data, the output can look differently on the screen. So for example, let's say D equals two, E equals four, and F equals D plus E which we all know the value should be six on the screen when I print out the value F. Run, run module, and you save it. It shows me a number six at the bottom. 
Now, when you format data, they don't always have to be numbers. Sometimes they, they can be strings like this. And when you see a string variable, it's always encapsulated in double quotes. So if I wanted to, I can change the formatting of this to show the number two in double quotes. Now it's no longer a number. Now it's considered to be a variable. The number four in double quotes. And when I run this, no longer will you see a number six underneath Mr. Salazar. You should see a 24. Run, run module, click save, and now it shows me a 24. Why does it show me a 24? Because I changed the formatting of these variables. These are no longer numbers. Now they're considered to be strings. It's what you would call concatenation or concatenating two variables together. Another example of concatenating variables would be something like this. First name equals any name, Joe. Last name equals Smith. Full name equals first name plus a space plus last name. Now here I'm using concatenation also because I'm concatenating the first name to the space and I'm concatenating the, the last name to the space as well. So when I print full name, the output should be Joe Smith with a space in between the first and the last name. Also, you can format the output. They don't always have to show up the same way that you typed it into your code. So for example, you can write a sentence to the user saying, Hello, new user. Hello, new user. This is your full name. Now, when I run this, it's really only going to plug in the value of full name to this sentence. And as you can see, I should have typed in a space between full and name. Now, if you don't know the user's first and last name, you can ask them for their first and last name by doing something like this. First name equals input, enter your first name. Last name equals input, enter your last name. And what you'll see in a little bit is when I run this, the cursor will start blinking right after the colon and wait for the user to enter their first name. Whatever the user enters, that'll be the value of first name. Then the cursor will wait and show the user enter your last name. The cursor will be blinking, waiting for the user to enter their last name. Then it'll declare that value for the last name and it'll just plug in all the values for everything. So let me run, run module, enter your first name, enter your last name. Same thing as before, only this time it waited for the user to enter those values. And that's an introduction on writing a simple Python script. The next thing I will show you is how you can take a screenshot of your assignment so that you can upload it for grading. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to open up a tool called SNP or the snipping tool. And anytime that you want to take a screenshot of your assignment and show your work, all you need to do is click on new SNP and draw a picture of whatever you're going to submit for your assignment. So here, all I have to do is click on Save SNP and call it, for example, Lab 1. The file is saved in the Pictures folder 
And when you're using your LMS, you can upload it to your assignment by uploading your picture.